Killing lions is hardly a national pastime on this continent, but in some African tribes, it has been a rite of passage into manhood. This African chief, for example, was very proud to show us the trophy skin of the leopard he conquered with a spear. Uh, you can't see the huge scar on his leg, but he is unashamed of the gash in his left arm. Can you see it there? From his ferocious challenger. Obviously didn't get a stitch on that one. I hope this helps create a backdrop for the metaphor and mentoring that Killing Lions represents New York Times bestselling author, one of my favorites of all time, John Eldridge. I finally get to meet him, and he's here with his son, Sam. They have provided a guide through the trials young men face. Pages from your real life journey, I, I guess, Sam, specifically from your crisis. Yeah, exactly. When I graduated from college, we started having these phone calls uh, on a weekly basis. I basically got a degree and expected to start working in that field, like most young people do, and then couldn't, and found myself struggling in the deep end of a pool, not really getting anywhere, wrestling with work and with women and with what to do with my life. So I turned to the person that I knew, had the most wisdom, and started these conversations with my dad. Isn't that nice, Dad, that your son would actually come to you. Oh my goodness, what every parent dreams of, right? And I was so honored that Sam would call. I felt so respected and the respect was so mutual. So we began these um, kind of weekly phone calls. He's in Southern California, just out of university. I'm still in Colorado. So over the phone, just talking through life, money, career, dreams, romance. There's a girl in the picture. Is she the one? When, when is it right to marry? Do you wait till you have the solid job? All that. And we got about three, about three months into those phone calls. And I said, Sam, this is, this is a killer book. Yeah. Like, because here's the question I asked him. I said, how many young men in your world, and this, the Christian university, we're talking quality young men, okay? Mm -hmm. I said, how many young men in your world, your peers, your friends, have anything like this, an older man, a father, that they can talk to about life stuff? Sam says, none. No. I don't know one. And older men too. Older men are looking for mentors as well, but this critical point as you're getting ready to launch into life and you had a terrible job, errand boy practically. And But here's the thing, a Washington Post uh, last year reported only 27% of college grads are working in the field of their major. Exactly. They're, they're doing other things and I'm sure right. they're just as disillusioned as you were becoming. Oh, absolutely, yeah, I think that we've forgotten how difficult actually the 20s are. What's facing us, in particular these, these years of uh, this depression that we went through, or rather a recession. Um, we've got to struggle with the finances, we've got to struggle with our work, we have to struggle with the fact that we want meaning in so many things. This generation wants to solve the wounds of the world. We just need to know how. You want to be heroes. And hey, you've got this pressure that just never goes away. Man up. And you know, my question, John, is, well, what is that? What does that mean in 2014, 2015? Right, exactly. So let's come back to the title of the book, Killing Lions. It's not about hunting, okay? It's a metaphor. When David faces Goliath, you remember the story? He's a young man. And actually, they try and talk him out of it. They're like, look, we appreciate your enthusiasm, you know, but you're just a kid. Like, you can't do this. And David says, oh, listen, I faced the lion and the bear. This won't be a problem for me. See, he had gone through threshold experiences, rites of passage. He had conquered his fears. Mm -hmm. and, and it gave him a settled confidence that allowed him to face Goliath, allowed him to become king. It, you, know, you see what I'm talking about? That's what we're after in young men. Young men want to move into the world with courage, and with strength. There with is a vision. warrior within. There is, right? But they do need those lion and bear experiences and they need fathering, you know, through those challenges to, to get that settled inner strength as a man. That's what we're after. Now you're touching on something else with the David illustration. It's just glaring to me. Identity. You talk so much about identity and part of the struggle 
in your early 20s, maybe yeah. the most important one. And David's identity was solid in whose he was, yes. in God. Yeah, so here's a fun part of the story. So we get three months into these conversations on the phone. I suggest, hey, Sam, why don't we, why don't we write a book together? He, Sam's an English major, wanted to be a writer, did the back page in the school newspaper, all that. And Sam says, no. Huh? He turns me down. I because did. Because of identity. Right. I was not ready to become the kind of guy who just rode on his father's coattails. I'd seen that happen with friends in college where they inherited the family business. So they never became the kind of man who could handle it. They never struggled. They never grew. They never became their own person. I didn't want that. I didn't feel like I was there yet. I didn't feel like I was the kind of person who would take that route. And so it was a year later, having walked through these issues of identity, how I saw myself, how the people around me had taught me to see myself. And a lot of that was shame in the Christian world, whether it was academic or spiritual. Letting go of that and embracing a different identity as a son of God um, actually affected every area of my life. I started pursuing this woman, got engaged. I was able to go back to my dad and say, I'm in, let's do this book. I mean, it was huge. Yeah, very David-like experience. Very sweet. Yeah. <gasps> I need to mention, just in case some of our viewers haven't connected the dots, you're the man who gave us Wild at Heart. To me, best selling book, to me that was the best distillation of, well, what makes a man tick. You told us, deep in his heart, every man longs for a battle to fight, an adventure to live, and a beauty to rescue. Right. What a gift. Yeah. Oh, and you look at the movies men love. They all have those three ingredients, right? From the Indiana Jones to the, you know, superhero movies, all of those stories. Battle, adventure, beauty. You want to understand little boys? Battle, adventure, beauty. It's all there. It's all there. You got the beauty too, Sam. I did. Tell yep. us about her. Oh, uh, well, we've been married for two years in January and uh, she actually took me to the Midwest where she's doing her nursing degree and, uh, Life with the woman was one of those conversations that came up because most young guys need to know what on earth is happening. How is she responding to me? How am I responding to her? And the process of pursuing her, of going after her heart, of understanding that she isn't the one who has the verdict on me and yet to still go and offer has been huge. And the years that I've been married have been both the most uncomfortable I've been. Two years. Yeah, <laughs> those two. They've been, I've already been the more uncomfortable ever. And... Uh, I have been said such, ex experiencing such joy and such life with her. It's been incredible. It, it's not much you don't cover in here. Everything from spiritual warfare to sexual healing, uh, things that don't get talked about enough. And uh, I, I just see this as being a tremendous help and encouragement. I was amazed to read that the average young person, your generation, will have not nine jobs, nine careers. Does that rock your world, John? What, our generation's more like maybe three? Right. And our parents, they were lifers in their jobs. My dad had one, right? You were, you were a company man back in our parents' generation. And then um, it, helps, it helps take the pressure off the millennials because they want meaning. They're struggling to find their place in the world. They want to change the world. They're fighting human trafficking, right? They, they want to bring healing to the world. But the millennials are living under a great deal of pressure because their life is so different from ours. Mm -hmm. Nine careers over the, right? Like that, that can be very disorienting until you bring God into the picture. Mm -hmm. You understand that you are in the process of training, particularly young men, right? God is training you to, to have the kind of strength and character so that when your dreams do come true, you're the kind of person who can handle it, yes. right? And so, especially in the 20s, those aren't wasted years. There's no wasted years. Those small jobs, you know, you're working at Starbucks or you're wiping down tables. It's all character building. It's all good yeah. if, you, if you see it in the context of God's story and, and you are David and that's his time in the field, right? I was tending my father's flocks. Before you get to become king, right, there's some time out there in the field. And you say, it's a battle to find a life worth living and not lose heart. Yep. Just to know that that's, 
part of the deal. And if, if you don't have the job of your dreams, hey, there are going to be several other options if you are part of that statistic. Right, right. Fine. Right. right. Adventures to live. Yeah. The great art is to hold on to your dreams while accepting the process. Yeah. Which has a lot of downtime, a lot of no man's land. Right. 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 Which is so hard for my generation to hear because everything is so instantaneous these days. We want everything now. We want the instant gratification. And we have these great aspirations. So to tell me that you need to wait, when I heard that, that was the hardest thing for me to receive. But it's God's favorite word. And yet it's such, <laughs> it gives me such dignity in working those small jobs that it, like I am becoming the kind of man that I want to be. Oh, tell us what you stole from your dad and put on your mirror. Yeah, so we actually finished with this the whole core of the book is that fathering is available. It's not that you have to have this dad, that God wants that for you in a variety of different ways, whether it's a sensei or if it's a mechanic that's working on your bug, as was one of my stories. Um, God himself, the books that he'll bring to your life. So on my mirror, I have the words, you are not alone, you have a father. And one other thing that you I've got it right here. You're going to be okay. Be and maybe the most important part, you're going to be okay. Part, okay. Be okay. <laughs> uh, but John, I think this came from the dad. You talk about the man's natural allergy to seeking God. Yeah. And we have to be open to fathering. We all need to be open yeah. to the guidance God promises. You see, this is the whole not stopping for directions thing. Oh, okay? yeah. That men feel that to be in a place of need is an Demeaning. embarrassment, yeah. right? Well, it means I'm a failure, right? I'm the guy that can't, you know, find his way to where I'm headed. You know, I can't handle my life. I can't handle my kids. I can't, right? So we don't ask for help because it feels like failure. But the, you look at the story of Jesus. It's so rich and beautiful. Jesus says, oh, I don't do anything that I don't see my father doing. I don't say anything until I hear my father say it. There's this rich, this is Jesus of Nazareth, okay? And he's saying, I love my relationship with my Heavenly Father. I live in dependence on Him. So what we're trying to open up in the conversation with men is, is to be open to fathering, right? You have a father. Be open to fathering. Well, and here's a, a promise from the Father. The Lord says, Psalm 32, verse 8, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Yes. God can't lie. Right. And this is the heart of Christianity. If it's anything, it's a promise of, of you have a father, right? And so many young people, of course, this is the, I mean, Sam's peers grew up in the divorce generation. Right. Right. Either their parents or their friends' parents, right? They saw a lot of wreckage, which is one of the reasons that they're waiting longer to get married. Mm. You see, they're pushing relationship off because they doubt that it works. This is a fatherless generation. And so to try and connect with God as father is kind of a, kind of a hard leap to make. Can I, trust, can I trust that relationship? Or do I try and figure out life on my own? So what the, you know, what the book kind of lays out, it's almost like a picture of here's what it looks like to receive fathering. Here's what it looks like in counsel, in love, in affirmation, in correction, in all of that, right? Paul says, don't lose heart, right? God is treating you as sons. There is a sacred romance. The first book. Yes. Captured my heart. Oh, could I ever talk about that for another half hour? And I want you to say hello to your cap captivating wife who wrote this classic. It's, if you open my book, it's like a library. It's just, I did a Bible study with women on this, uh, enriched our lives to understand how the enemy's arrows mm. uh, assault us first with a lie uh, and then in that wound and wounding, we make vows that can derail us yeah. and keep us from God's best. Yeah. I, 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 I love that this is called a, a confession, an invitation, and a manifesto for a generation. This one's going to my son in fourth year university. It is right on time. Yeah. Killing Lions, a guide through the trials young men face. It is at our e-store. And I want to mention, there are 17 adventure films at killinglions.com. Yes. You, you've had a lot of fun with this. And we did not mention your magazine, 
Sam? Right. I also work on a magazine called And Sons Magazine with my dad and two other brothers. We're constantly putting out issues each month. and we're Online? Online. Four men exploring categories of adventure and good things and beauty and, of course, Eve. And it's awesome. Woohoo. Well, the help's needed and look how wonderfully it's being provided. And if right now you have a need, you're struggling, you have a, a child who's just... Uh, out of the loop, wondering what's next. Why not call and let us pray with you? Uh, we know the Father is totally invested, totally interested, fiercely committed, John Eldridge says. I love that. He is fiercely committed he is. to that loved one, to you. Gentlemen, thank you. God bless you in all you're doing. Well, it's thank so you. great to be with you. Love your heart. Love your show. Thanks for having us on it. Come back. We'd love to. Great.